moving right into our next session, which is a fireside chat with Mr. Georgie George, co-founder GoNuts. He's going to be talking about building a brand in the experience economy. Now, Georgie George is a seasoned business leader with over 20 years of experience in media, broadcasting, sports, brand management, entertainment, digital, and live events globally. He has worked in leadership roles with leading companies like MTV Asia, Astro, Yahoo, Percept Sports and Entertainment, Sony Music, and UBM. His last role was as Vice President, General Manager, Country Head at World Wrestling Entertainment, WWE, for the Indian subcontinent. Currently, he is the co-founder at GoNuts Asia, GoNuts Asia's largest and most influential platform for human connection, communication, and commerce using celebrities to make lives richer. And having a conversation with him in this fireside chat is Mr. Ruhail Amin, Senior Editor, Exchange for Media Group. I welcome you, gentlemen, on the screen. And uh, Ruhail, I'd leave this Thank you. conversation forward. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Always a great. Always you. Uh, welcome, Mr. George, once again. Thank a you, second Ruhail. conversation. Thank you so much for joining us. And uh, I'll straight away get into uh, the first question. I mean, first of all, tell me you have created a platform that is so unique. I was going through it in the day. Uh, I mean, I haven't seen kind of uh, such platforms. Tell me the idea behind Go Nuts. What do you do exactly so that our audience also benefits from it? Um, yeah, uh, thank you for having me here. So let me just quickly tell you what uh, what we are about and what we intend to do. We saw the biggest with fandom that exists in our country, uh, we saw the biggest divide was the ability of fans, especially in secondary and tertiary towns, to be able to connect with celebrities uh, that are fun fundamentally very metrocentric. And as you probably know, even the communication from celebrities to their fans is very one-sided through their social media. Uh, we saw there was an incredible opportunity to disrupt the space. And uh, through disruption, what we meant was an opportunity for me this to become an immersive, experiential opportunity as opposed to a one-way communication. As you know, many agencies pay a lot of money to many celebrities to post a tweet or post is a, a Facebook uh, on Facebook or Insta. Um, here was an opportunity for the larger Indian diaspora to connect with these celebrities, to be able to use them in a way that is immersive uh, and relatable. And last but not the least, go to a trusted pipe or a trusted source that can actually deliver uh, those experiences for them. Um, you know, be it weddings, be it brand promotions, be it creation of content, be it shout outs. So we started with shout outs as a fundamental, uh, as a fundamentally as a platform uh, to be able to actually create human connection between people. Uh, imagine a person sitting in Varanasi or Harpur or, or any smaller town in India being able to gift his daughter on her wedding uh, an invitation from Kailash Kher or, or Shankar Mahadevan where he sings also a line or two of the song that she really, really loves. Uh, what an incredible memory. And our business is that, creating powerful memories uh, in the minds of our customers and making their lives richer. Right. And when it comes to using uh, celebrities for doing it, is it limited to only the film industry, the music industry, or are you also looking beyond it? So we, uh, you know, this is a very interesting question, Rohail, because initially we had, you know, people who are in the investment community and venture capitalists and all of them saying, Kya Bollywood leke asakti ho, inko le se asakti ho, inko. and the names just centered around these people. Right. As you can see today with adoption of video content, which is almost 50% more than the predecessors in the millennial generation, it's multi-screen, multi-channel, uh, all of the above. We have thrown a plethora of people who until some time back were not even known. These are on our OTT platforms. These are across radio. These are chefs. These are sportsmen. I mean, earlier it was all about cricket, right? And it was all about Bollywood. Today, we are talking mm -hmm. about an actor from Mirzapur, Bita Harshita Gore, or we are talking about Pankaj Tripathi, or we are talking about Udham Singh, who was a VJ on Channel V and an iconic one at that. And I'd love to show you a little promo. Our objective sure. is to really connect with the heartland and for them to really resonate with people whom they relate to and not just the people that are up there in the stratosphere. I think we've got a lot more realistic in our life now, especially I hope with the pandemic, where we believe, where we know that a lot of things 
uh, which were make believe and we lived in those immersive experiences in film today are about reality experiences and uh, mm. and that's what it is so you know the the breadth the the, the scale the multilingual part that we bring to the table the multi price point the multi genre is what makes go nuts exciting for brands and makes go nuts exciting for customers right so it's only the end customer like uh, somebody who is a fan uh, who can you know kind of go go nuts but are you looking at also because brands also use celebrities in a very big way and they have to shell out really big monies to do it uh, are you looking at so was brand issue problems as well as you move along so i was managing director at ubm which is in former markets and one of the things uh when i when i when i inherited the business uh i found that it was probably one of the most boring businesses in the whole world as you know exhibition businesses <laughs> business is archaic you know it it almost goes back to prehistoric dinosaur days and nothing's really changed the same people come into those exhibition halls go down the go down the walkways and then go back um you know after interacting yes it's a multi, you know multi billion dollar industry worldwide but nothing's really changed or progressed i saw the incredible opportunity of using my experience from media and entertainment to really bring together or bring a b2c face to a very boring b2b business uh that was the first time i started so we had jewelry shows and renewable energy and all these kind of verticals which are fundamentally b2b verticals and for the first time i started using celebrities i started using you know miss india's in the jewelry show uh, inviting people to come to the show all of that now unconsciously all of this worked at the back of my mind in order for us to be also now disrupting these old spaces which were archaic and really needed newer ways to connect and engage with customers newer ways to get their brand messaging strongly into the minds and hearts of customers and stakeholders and i think the opportunity for brands the opportunity for smaller msmes and smes which are about 800 million in our country and even if they were to spend a lakh each you're talking about a serious you know an 80 billion dollar business um um and therefore we are already see uh you know brands connect with us to do these brand promotions and again all done over the phone so no big fancy budgets no 18 camera shoots no you know couple of days in a studio and it's working because it's used through on social media people are loving it and people are consuming it as someone said in a panel just uh, not a panel kavita said sometime back on her thing i mean you are bombarded with over you know couple of tens of hundred brands in a day how many do you really right. reach and therefore it's really important to have the frequency the connection and the ability to come back with newer stories right right and now i think when we uh, saw this pandemic going on and the caller tunes they had to rope in mr bachchan to make people register it i think that's a very live example of the influence Absolutely. they exert uh, so so my next question is you know you are in a category that is niche uh, you know in a in a larger sense uh, so tell me what does it take to build a brand in this category what it takes to build a brand in this category i would think is a lot of what i call as passion marketing um you know uh, ken roberts said something and uh, he he wrote a book which was all about called love bites if you remember and it was all about what brands are like love bites uh they need to be visible they are pa- they have to have passion and last but not the least they need to be of high recall value you you, you know i, I uh, and, and that's what it's about our objective with creating go nuts has been exactly that on two in two different ways one is what we do in terms of our brand messaging and what people consider the brand value or identity of our brand second is how do we communicate our brand purpose um so contrary to what people may think oh wait a minute this is a celebrity shout out platform uh it's all about shout outs a whole bunch of celebrities there celebrity commerce etc cetera, etc cetera. but we have a larger purpose and our larger purpose is to make people's lives richer through the memories that they have through uh through the through this these videos that we create therefore the creation of those videos the trans, you know the ability to communicate the heart of that message it's not about a birthday message it's about how that content that we co-create with that particular artist makes such a big difference let me show you one little uh video of an artist who have brought back to gonads and you will understand how this resonates with the heart of what we try to do 
just give me a second and just tell me if this is kind of uh, you're getting this on your screen. So what also has happened in the last few, uh, I mean, months we've seen the rise of virtual, of course, but in the over the last few years, uh, social media has taken up such a huge mind uh, share that everything is for social media. You shoot a video, you shoot a picture, you eat your food, it's social media first, right? So you want, to, how do you tell me, how has social media impacted the, this entire experience marketing space and creating experience over the last few years? I think people are a lot more vocal and a lot more expressive about their feelings now, simply because they have found a medium for expression. And social media is nothing but uh, uh, a footprint for expression. Uh, it could be a, a dish that you like that you filmed and or taken a photograph and placed it on an Instagram. It could be a video you created and you uploaded on Facebook. It is about mm -hmm. expressing vanity. Let me put it this way. Right. And vanity will never right. go out of fashion uh, as long as we walk this earth. Uh, what right. our videos do and what GoNuts is trying to do is fundamentally connect with that vanity. When I gift something to somebody, say I give it to Ruhail, Ruhail is going to show that off to his community that he is a recipient of this. And guess what? X person, be it an artist, Javed Ali or Shankar Mahadevan or Kailash Kher has actually called his name out, sang him two lines of what he loved and expressed what somebody else was trying to tell Ruhail in a way that connected with him and will stay a memory in his life forever. That's what this is about. And as long as people want memories, as long as people want to thrive on vanity, this is going to be a business that's going to be fairly, fairly uh, important for connecting people. So, uh, Mr. George, give me a sense of uh, the drivers of uh, the influencer, uh, you know, kind of content. Uh, is it uh, what is the audience profile like? Uh, is it the urban centers, the tier two? Give me a sense of that. It's uh, early days yet, Rohail, in that sense, because um, mm -hmm. you know the, the business has just been about six to eight months old. We're still kind of uh, using data that we are getting from user behavior, people who come onto the site, uh, people who are transacting, people who are recipients and really trying to understand what really works. So a lot of the mm. data that we collect is actually for user data as opposed to having some research agency research this and give it to us secondhand. So in that sense of the word, we are almost like an OTT platform. Um, mm. We are therefore deep diving into what people like, uh, what kind of age groups, what, who's actually buying. But just to give you and to answer your question, the demographics currently point out to predominantly male in the age group of 25 to 50 uh, and mm -hmm. fundamentally metrocentric at this point. And, and understandably so. Uh, as this gains traction and you're slowly starting to use social media and communication and marketing to get into secondary towns and, and, and uh, tier two and tier three cities, you will find the adoption and user pattern change very drastically. Uh, and the, in fact, we've, we've, we've had some incredible case studies uh, from smaller towns, uh, people who wanted right. a poem by one of our artists, people who wanted to have a wedding card done for his particular, for his daughter from a small village. Uh, and these were, in fact, these presented case studies to us without us and, and, and us moving into that direction. Yes, we knew that there was an opportunity in the wedding industry, but now we know that there is a big opportunity of actually disrupting the wedding cards business uh, by using digital mm. bit. Uh, and these kind yeah. of things yeah. are coming uh, as insights from customers themselves. And, um, and uh, it's really interesting. So the market will teach us just as it is, ha has taught radio, it has taught television, it has taught the OTT business. Uh, it will teach us in terms of what consumers really want if we keep our ears to the ground. Oh, you mean uh, like uh, Shah Rukh Khan would be inviting somebody for a wedding? That would be totally he awesome. Dancing yeah. at weddings? Uh, he probably will invite in some time. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Uh, tell me one thing. Uh, uh, you are uh, like, you know, the brand has been built. It is visible. I mean, I saw there's a lot of demand for it, but tell me what have been some of the learnings uh, uh, of during this journey of building this brand? I think the learnings have been the, I mean, these are cliche words, but the fact is uh, customer risking because the customer dictates how your product is defined. Uh, 
And if you can co-create that product with him, the user experience as what now everyone talks about, be it the pathway to commerce on site or the experiences offline, there needs to be cohesiveness from a brand point of view. You can't have some, like for example, if I were to say, let's take uh, Milkaji who's on board, a Milkaji who's extremely respected and is a legend and an icon in our country and who's also on Go Nuts, by the way, uh, mm -hmm. his off-site and on-site uh, presence and aura and, uh, and, and communication should not be dissonant. Uh, where it actually affects his own personal brand. So these are things that we are very careful about. And uh, a lot of it comes from my deeper understanding of talent and having worked with in the music, in the television and in the in the film side of the business. Uh, and to be able to really not treat talent as commodities, but treat them right. as talent that is going to be creating unbelievable and memorable content for customers. Right. My final question is, uh, uh, where do you see GoNuts in two years from now? And second, uh, what is the scope of uh, influencer marketing uh, and what kind of trends will define it? I've asked three questions in one. So, yes. <laughs> yeah. So uh, let me answer the influencer marketing first. Uh, we will always look. I mean, this is historic, right? Uh, even in the era of offline businesses or brick and mortar stores, we've always gone and got a recommendation from the salesman who's selling us, from saris to washing machines to anything. Uh, somebody very recently, uh, there was a panel I, I happened to listen to, and they said that what, what would they prefer uh, and how would uh, people actually navigate to uh, in retail? They said that almost 85% will, they would prefer that they would go to the store. Now, that trend is slowly changing abroad, uh, and you have instances of Burberry that actually use, the, use their offline presence uh, more in terms of people coming and feeling the product but buying online. They're actually moving their customers online. I see that influencer marketing, in, its, in, in, in the way people understand it today, which is basically um, using people to manipulate, if I may use that word, or influence buying behavior, uh, it's going to change very well because brands, people, customers will expect brands to be more authentic, people to be more trustworthy. Uh, brand trust, as we call it, is essential. So therefore, even when we work with brands, uh, we're careful not to have our talent pool work on brands that are actually misrepresenting themselves. It's very important and we make sure that we have all the legal uh, documentation in place. Uh, because you don't want a situation which comes back to haunt you. So authenticity right. is important. Trust is very, very important. And at the end of the day, we've got to know for a fact that these artists also for them are brands in their own right. And their own brand longevity is determined by the kind of products and services that they are going to influence. So I'm always a very you know skeptical about somebody posting on Facebook or 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 sending a tweet and you know getting a couple of lakhs because you have not really kind of, uh, you've just got the money, you don't care and you just put it out. Uh, but I think, and, and, and in many cases, we've seen that blow up in people's faces. I think now it's time Ooh. where customers also understand that. Uh, just as very recently, we, we heard the story about one of our musicians actually buying Facebook likes and followers uh, to be able command a higher price on influencer marketing. It doesn't that tell you something about how far this influence can be bought. Uh, therefore, it's, it's very important for brands to be authentic and, and, uh, and create that level of trust because consumers are not right. stupid. Perfect. I think it's uh, still in the growing phase and a lot of new things will come up. Of course, I mean, there will be greater uh, credibility in demand. I mean, the more focus on that as we move along from uh, the platforms as well as from the celebrity side. But thank you, Mr. George, for sharing these thoughts. We have a lot of questions, but we are out of time. Hopefully very soon in the next conversation. Thank you, thank you so much. It's always a pleasure uh, being on the show. Sorry about the technical glitch. I've got to figure out this part. But no, uh, right. <laughs> but thank you anyways. No, yeah. Thank you Pleasure. so much. Thank you so much. Thank Bye. you so much, thank Mr. You. George. Thank you, Mr. Ramin, for doing uh, this wonderful conversation here on screen for all of us. We've all taken some notes here. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.